Welcome to today's HR Locker podcast. Today we have Anya Simic from Deal. So we're delighted to have you here with us today. And Anya, would love for you to introduce yourself, please. Hello, everyone, and thank you. Thank you for having me. This is exciting. Uh, we've done the other way around with Adam, <laughs> so I'm, I'm happy to uh, reverse the roles and uh, join you today. Uh, so yeah, uh, my name is Anya. I am uh, the head of marketing at Deal. Uh, Deal is a remote payroll company, so it's all-in-one platform for everyone who's working remotely to onboard and pay their team. Uh, I'm really, really excited to, to be joining today. So one of the things when we got talking, Anya, what I wanted to kind of get you on to talk about was to how to onboard your remote working team. So, you know, the last couple of months, everybody's all of a sudden had remote workers, um, and a lot of companies wouldn't have had this before. Um, and I suppose that's why we were kind of interested in having a chat with you about it, because um, Deal, as far as I know, you've been up and running since 2018. Have you always um, had remote workers or how did you guys start with that? Uh, yes, we have always been remote. So Deal was designed as a remote first company until this day, almost two years in. Uh, we are fully remote. Remote. Uh, the, the, the fun, like, let me share some fun facts. So in 2018, we were a team of six people and we were in four countries, uh, a year and a half forward. Now we are almost 30 people. Wow. Uh, yeah. And we are in eight countries. Uh, so we doubled, doubled the number of countries, uh, expanded to more continents. Uh, but yeah, we're fully remote and fully distributed, which is very exciting. And, and for us, it's, it, kind of happened organically. So, so you've we, ju you're just used to that, you know, you exactly. didn't have any difference. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And myself personally, I've never worked in a traditional office. So for me, remote working has been the, the way of life uh, yeah. for throughout my whole career. So and in terms of for your company, I presume, so you've always just interviewed, you do the whole process, the interviewing, onboarding, everything remotely. Exactly. Um, so a lot of people that I've spoken to when they're we're, they're talking about doing that kind of online interviewing and they're like, well, you know, when I meet a person, it's I kind of get that that face to face rapport. Do you think when you're interviewing online, you lose a little bit of that um, rapport, that face to face rapport? Or, you know, how do you how do you overcome it? I suppose if it's if it's online. I don't see it as uh, um, an issue or a challenge. I think building rapport is possible in a virtual setting as well. It's just different, I would say. So, you know, when you're working remotely, I think that this whole interviewing process and also working process is a lot more intimate in a way because you are inviting someone to your home possibly yeah. or to your, your bedroom. <laughs> exactly. exactly. You know, it, can be, it can be a study, <laughs> it can be the living room, it can be the, the kitchen table, wherever you, you feel more comfortable. And I think it also helps you understand a person a, a bit better like when you would come in, into a traditional office for an interview of course you would you know do all the tips and tricks you know dress nicely act professional comb your hair put your makeup whatever you know you, you're you're into but in a remote setting or a virtual setting it's I would say just different not necessarily harder uh, but it also helps you you know, understand how this person works in a remote setup because I, I think what they show an in interview, how they communicate, uh, what their, uh, you know, communication style and working style uh, looks like, it just helps you build a picture. Yeah, and I suppose you are right. It is actually quite intimate because you are, you are basically in the person's home. When exactly, you're yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just accelerates the whole get-to-know process. Yeah, I think at this stage, every single one of my work colleagues has met my six-year-old son. But he keeps walking in and out. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. No, it's, just, it's not just the surrounding. You're, you're exactly right. You, you meet the, the parents, you meet the kids, you meet the pets. You know, like often, oftentimes I have a dog, a very chatty dog that loves to just pop into my meetings and, and bark and say hi. Uh, we've seen cats. Uh, you know, on the screen, just casually walking by. It's it's all part of the the, the remote yeah. work, and I think it doesn't make you 
less professional. It's just a, a different style. And I think a lot of remote companies actually have this like output based uh, performance tracking, which I think makes a lot of sense because we're spread out throughout the whole world. And it doesn't really matter if you're sitting five or 15 hours a day. If, if you get the work done, it's the only thing that matters. It's, it's just, yeah. the, I actually think that, yeah, I think that's key with the change, the shift, I suppose, to so much remote working is that it, I think people should be moving away from that night. You're clocking in from nine to half five. Exactly. It's actually reduced in the day. Is, is exactly. Key, you know, and exactly. if you can do that at the kitchen table. Of fantastic. course. And, and, you know, if you're, well, we are all working from home or most of us are working from home now. So remote working has been uh, shifted to home working. And, you know, we all have our, our private lives as well. And with the whole pandemic and, and things just being a bit shifted and changed, I think we also need to take into account that sometimes you need to take a little chunk of your day to do something else. And mm. I, I think it's fine. So being able to like start and stop and just produce your best work is is all that it takes. Mm. Yeah, and especially during the pandemic at the moment is that we don't know what's going on in people's homes. You know, they could have somebody who's sick or they could have, you know, they, exactly. they could be shielding themselves. Or, so you do need to be able to to be understanding, I think. Exactly. And and we need to be actually extra supportive right now, especially like regardless yeah. of if you have been working remotely or if you're just starting, especially if you're just starting. Because, you know, people, people stress about a lot of things like technology. Will this work? Mm. Will this fail? Is my internet connection stable enough? And it's important to understand that it, it doesn't matter. Like, it's okay if, if your internet just disappears for a second. Yeah. It's okay. Like, you're not... Yeah. Don't you're all of a sudden, like, you're not working. What are you doing? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And there is, there is no one to, to kind of, like, watch over your shoulder and, and make sure that you're working. It's just... I, I think it's it's just important to to be flexible and be understanding and of course you know communicate everything that you're doing in a in a set up way that works for your company and your culture. So if we go back to kind of get onboarding people, so a lot of the <laughs> offices here they're starting to reopen and people are starting to hire again and and most people would be in that kind of fixed frame of mind that you know in the first day that somebody comes to work they come to the office and you've all these millions of documentation that people have to sign you know and you're start a forum and all that kind of stuff. So what are your procedures at GL around onboarding when your employees really have never set foot in the office before? Yeah, well, you, it's good that we're talking because I'm also <laughs> HR responsible in a way uh, because we don't have a dedicated HR uh, person at this point, but I'm responsible for the onboarding process, uh, at least the, the general one. So I think this day one welcome is pretty much the same, just then through a different channel. So yeah. uh, on on person's day one, I would set up a call in, in their morning, if that's possible, due to time zones. So far, it has been possible. So I would set up a call and just uh, give them a little tour of uh, you know what the deal is, um, how the team works, what kind of tools we use. And I think it's it's really important to focus on the tools because I think each company has their own setup and their yeah. own um, kind of suite uh, of, of tools. So I think I, I try to give them, you know, I try to ask questions. So I've had people who have never used Slack before, who are coming from more traditional spaces, who are not used to, um, you know, all the tools and apps. So I guide them through that. I give them an overview of, how to use what, when to use what, uh, because, you know, in a traditional office, you would probably send emails instead of just shooting someone yeah. a message in Slack. So I give them an overview of everything. And then we do have design process for department specific um, onboarding. And yeah, it is, uh, you know, si digitally signing a lot of paper, uh, papers, but I think it's just mostly just having a proper structure that works for you. Uh, realizing that you don't want to overwhelm someone and just throw everything in their face on day one. Um, and another thing, check in, because mm -hmm. you don't have uh, the, well, the option to, to just, just walk pop in, by yeah. And, yeah. Exactly, walk by and say like, hey, how are you doing? Do you need help with anything? So we try to be proactive as a team and really make the person welcome to the team. Mm -hmm. and, and also we are encouraging all new hires to just write messages and, and just 
have this mini intro calls because at deal we we do have a structure but it's mostly flat and we have mm-hmm. this digital uh open door policy when everyone is just one slack message away so it doesn't matter if if you if you want to talk to ceo or ceo or your manager just connect on a human level like we're all humans regardless yeah. of our position so this is w- what we are really trying to encourage people to do so just connect yeah. and be proactive I think you're right even for us we have so many tools and I think it's really overwhelming for somebody when they start because we're like okay hey, we use this over here we use this to communicate with these people and it's everything is because we're remote it's everything is so technology heavy um yeah. you know and and they might have come from a completely different stack from another another company so getting, exactly yeah. yeah but I do like the idea of that at least just send a message to somebody and introduce yourself <laughs> exactly yeah it, it works like magic you know you really you really just take away this whole you know offices and floors and and elevators but you're just you're literally just one line away from, yeah. from saying hi exactly um so the new person started you've got them to digitally sign all their documents and they've gone through all the different um aspects of different t- technology that you're using what do you invest a lot in online training or do you just kind of set up different um meetings with other people in the the business or how do you actually kind of train them on the job well i think that the training on the job at deal is is kind of twofold so we do give them the initial um resources i i would call them resources so not necessarily training but you know either through uh general onboarding call or through department specific call uh but then the other aspect of it is 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 really hands on experience so i think and, and this is important also you know what who to look for when you are um employing someone when you're inter- mm-hmm. interviewing someone because i i think every remote company needs to have a self starter and someone who is motivated and proactive about learning someone who is willing to communicate all the challenges or all the questions mm-hmm. um so yeah we do have a checklist uh, that has all the all the points so i wouldn't say we invest a lot of time into training itself but i would just put it on boarding because yeah. it it's it's done gradually so after the initial call you would then you know as you start working you will get introduced to you know procedures and processes and and maybe new tools or something so it's it's a mix of both i would say yeah i i do think the recruitment process you touched on that earlier is is really important because if you're going to be having somebody in a remote setting they do need to be a self starter they can't be sitting at home all day long waiting for someone exactly. to contact them you know and that's that's that because you've given them all the resources Exactly, to contact yeah. anybody they need so they they need to actually take that into their their own hands somewhat it's important yeah. as part of the, the but the i i think that's not that's not too hard to to uh assess once you know who you're looking for and what kind of soft skills you're looking for yeah. so you know if if you're if you do uh send them an assessment task or home task as mm-hmm. we call it um and give them just a bit of overview and then when you when you receive the tasks that you know exactly how much research they've done yeah uh, you and it's it's very visible like if they have seen your website if they i don't know looked on social media if mm. they and a lot of them a lot of the people that we were interviewing asked a lot of questions because we always say like hey if you have a question we are there to send us an email and they do which really shows they're actually you know, interested it, exactly exactly yeah. exactly yeah, yeah. So you're a 100% remote company or you have people all over the world. How do you manage a completely dispersed workforce because you've got different legislations in different company countries, you've got different currencies, different payrolls in each country. How how do you manage what is it eight different countries <laughs> and yeah. still keep saying <laughs> eight countries and going strong. Well, uh to to answer in three words, uh we use deal uh we actually that's have, the end of it no <laughs> that's, that's, that's the end of it if you're interested to learn more uh, check out our website yeah. um yeah well we you know it it's uh it's actually great because uh every person on our team is a deal user and it really helps us streamline the the initial burdens of having to figure out the local relations and if this person can be employed and how they can be employed 
um, you know, what kind of uh, contract you need to be localized and uh, legally binding, I know, invoices, currencies, as you mentioned. So it's, it's a lot to take in and a lot to handle, especially on a monthly basis. So we actually streamline all of that through deal, which which also gives us a great opportunity to test the product itself. Yep. Because whenever we have a feature uh, that has been pushed, we just test it by using it. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, and I suppose they really <laughs> understand the product then as well because they are actually end users. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And I think it's really good because we also. Uh, give feedback to to the product team and to our uh, development team because we're like hey i'm not sure like i cannot find this where is this and yeah. it's instant feedback right like we need to we need to make sure that it's yeah, if you it's can't use it exactly <laughs> exactly so yeah we we trying to save time on, on qaing there just by <laughs> sending our people so that's, there that's basically what deal does if i have a number of different People and because I, I do think a lot of companies would have a huge um, they would think it's a blocker because yeah. to hire somebody in a different country because I don't know how to pay them. I don't know how to send a contract to them. Um, and that's in essence what you guys do for people. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So I, I have done and Alex, our co-founder and CEO, has done numerous uh, trainings and like how to to um, set up the in the right way for, as you know, as a contractor or as a full time employee. And whenever we we actually talk about this, we break down all the things. So onboarding, contracts, documents collection, compliance documents collection, tax uh, forms for the U.S., then invoicing and paying. And, you know, it's really funny because we talk for an hour about it. And then I, I see, you know, people are just getting more um, frustrated and, and stressed yeah, about all in that. Yeah. <laughs> and then we and then we come in with a punchline and say hey we can actually help you with all of this and I, I think it 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 really does solve a big issue because you if you're if you have a small company especially startup and, and you don't have legal and HR resources in-house you probably would not spend a lot of time because you don't have it um, researching and figuring out how to set a person up. So as you mentioned, it can be a blocker. So at Deal, we're trying to help that. And we're huge advocates for, you know, global yeah. talent being everywhere and opportunities should be as well. So don't limit yourself to a 30 mile radius uh, because we, we can help you with that. And I, I definitely think that's gonna, that's kind of the next step past this remote working for those companies who were really reticent about remote workers. They were pushed into remote working the last couple yeah. of months. And they've seen that people can still be productive and that's good. And now I think the next, you know, jump for people is that exactly like I said, you know, let's go beyond that 30 miles for me to yeah. hire somebody in, you know, Romania or England or whatever. It's all the same. It's, if that person has the right talent, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't yes. be a blocker. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And I think, uh, I mean, governments and, and local policies still, still need to pick up and, and try and, and, create this truly global workforce uh, or at least enable enable the, the workforce yeah. to be global but i'm really happy to see that a lot of companies a, a lot of really big players are joining this remote work structure and they're actually um they a couple of them said that they will continue working remotely yeah which is amazing news and i'm so happy that the you know tech giants realized that you know, they, they can work remotely. It's it's okay. <laughs> exactly. Because, yeah, unless you're actually physically, you know, in a shop giving something to somebody or physically doing, you know, uh, nurses or doctors, yeah. <laughs> different. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. But if you're, you know, a lot of the tech companies, especially for ourselves, it makes no difference if I'm in the office or, or I'm at home. Um, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And yeah. I think some of the, some of the health, uh, Companies in the health industry are also uh, trying to, to figure out the best way how to combine technology in order to, to give support and help more people. I mean, yeah, and I, I think there's there is a huge focus on, oh, well, you're going to save money in terms of real estate and whatever else. But I even just think from an employee wellness side of it, I mean, for me, I have three kids at home. I'm usually rushing to work, rushing home, bringing the kids to some football practice or some extracurricular activity that they have every single day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um remote working is definitely less stressful because yeah. I'm running around the place you know and, and I think that's that's definitely been a, a um 
I think an eye opener for a lot of people who have started remote working is that you didn't actually have to be this busy or just running around, you know. And so, and I, I think you touched on this earlier as well, is that forget about people just logging hours. It's actually what they're producing at the end of it. And if you can do your job, then it shouldn't really matter where, exactly. where you are. Exactly. Yeah. But I definitely yeah. think that um, the next big step for people then is to go beyond their own country limits and say, okay, well, let's actually actually do embrace the global talent. Um, yeah, so that, that yeah. would be wonderful. Like I remember a couple of years ago when I was looking for a job and of course I was looking for a remote job. Um, I would get so frustrated by by going through numerous um, ads and, and job postings and they say they're remote, but then they're accepting only from one country. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which was at times so annoying because it, it really doesn't matter. And especially now that, you know, if you yeah. steal, you can truly, <laughs> you can truly hire anyone yeah. anywhere. Yeah, no, absolutely. Look, if I'm if I'm here in Clare and somebody else is in Dublin, it makes no difference if that person is a different country because you know, exactly. Bristol, you know. And I, but I, I do think that for all this, and for for all anybody who's going to be going remote or you know continue with remote, I think the key is the technology that you that you're using that you keep that communication open all the time, and it's not just for current workers. If you're hiring new people, to have that open, open what do you say, open digital platform open open door policy yeah digital open door policy digital yes. open door exactly. policy yeah i'm gonna steal exactly. that exactly exactly but i i mean i i think it takes time for a company to to design a process that works for them so i i'm not a huge fan of you know must have tool lists no. because yeah. it it really depends on a company like it just yeah of course a lot of us are using slack uh, for for communication, but it's not the only tool for for chats, right? Like there are many many others yeah. that I are like for you. Yeah, exactly. They equally work. It just depends. It just depends what exactly you need. So just you know, pick your stack and and just go with it, or test and realize that something's not working and it can't be approved, and then just replace it. I listened it. to something recently. Yeah, I listened to something recent that it was like when you read these things that are best practice. They, their best practice for that company and take, exactly. take what works for your company. You exactly. Can't, you can't just copy it. Ideally, you know, it'd be great if you could, but you know. Yeah, it would be, it would be ideal, but you know, unfortunately not everything is copy paste. So we have to, but I still think that the best practices are important to, to be out there. And I think remote community is really big and actually well-connected. And I think all Co-founders and just remote workers are are open to just share their thoughts and, and give their opinion. And then you as a listener or a reader can just take whatever is important for you or relevant. Even if you don't agree with something, that's great. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, even the two of us having having this podcast, <laughs> right? Like everything I said is not <laughs> the only truth. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I don't, uh, you know. Uh, have the the truth the golden ticket oh, the golden <laughs> ticket exactly I'm, I'm just giving my opinion so if somebody's listening in and they say like hey this makes no sense that's okay uh you just uh need to you know make it your own yeah and I think that like for for myself the the two things that have really worked for me for remote working is one like I said I've got kids at home and I used to kind of you know put them downstairs and hide them away and tell them you know sh- sh- mom's on the phone now and don't come up yeah. for the first week was so stressful and so now I'm like look okay you know you know if the door is closed don't come in and they, you have to get them on board they need to understand that you're working and understand the exactly. parameters and be able to come up if they need something you know so I do have a dedicated workspace so that if they need something they'll come up and knock on the door and you know not think that I'm going to you know shove the magic close the door real quick so at least get them on <laughs> get them on site exactly uh, exactly yeah. it's, it's just then, a, yeah it's the is the one of the you know from from uh, BBC News this viral exactly. video <laughs> I mean it's okay, you know, yeah. and it's, it it's one of, she just picked up the job in her lap, no problem. Hey. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You, you don't need to, you don't yeah. need to just, yeah, shut the door and lock exactly. it and then put it's like a good. million different locks for, for them to take hours to unlock. It's okay. Like you just, you know, if you're living with someone like, you know, mm-hmm. people that are around me, they know if I have my headphones on, uh, they, you know, raise their eyebrows and then I give them a thumbs up and say, it's okay. <laughs> I can speak. Yeah, 
yeah, you just have to get people on board. And then the other thing that I really worked for me personally as well was then you have to you have to treat it like you're going to the office for one for yeah. better word. It's that, you know, I get up, I get dressed, I come to work, I put on my my laptop and I don't you'd go for 25 coffees or, you know, like I'm actually, you yeah. treat it like a work day because this is a work day. You know, you are at work. You're just maybe not be in the office, but you're, you're, you're here, you know, so that's, that's important. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. And I, I do think, I, I think the next step for people is going to be interesting to see how they onboard and recruit people remotely. Um, and that, yes, people probably are going to be very apprehensive about it, but there's so, I would totally agree that the remote working um, community for one for better, they're so helpful. People are so helpful and they have so right. many great tips. Um, and even yourself, so that to, I suppose, kind of work with what's out there, research it and, and take take what works for you as a company. Yes, exactly. I'm, I'm looking forward to it as well, because I, I think now, since we're a couple of months in to this whole craziness, I think we are slowly transitioning from this survival mode. Yeah to something that's like, okay, we can now afford to take a step back, uh, see what works and what doesn't, and just reiterate and create, truly create a process that is sustainable and, yeah. and just possible for each company. And that it's not just reactionary. Exactly, I mean, exactly. We're yeah. not in crazy pandemic alert mode, that it's not just everyday work life. You know? Exactly, yeah. yeah. I, I've seen a lot of conversations a couple of months back on LinkedIn where people, remote work people, uh, advocates and people were just so scared about companies trying or being forced to try remote working and then realizing that it's it's not possible for them just because of the circumstances um which was a you know a, a good way to yeah. think about it but uh, i think you know we're all in this together so i think we just we're there for each other so you know so and if somebody wants to get in contact with you guys how, what is the best way to do that all right so if you want to learn more about deal we are at letsdeal.com uh, we're also on social media so linkedin uh, twitter facebook at deal uh, very easy to, to, uh, to <laughs> memorize so just put deal everywhere and the first thing that pops up that, that's us yeah and if you want to to get in contact with me, uh, you can reach me on LinkedIn. Uh, it's uh, Anya Simic, so I'm probably uh, one of a few. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I, I'm there. And I don't know if you're going to, to put some links. Yeah, uh, we'll put some LinkedIn. links and everything with, with yeah, the podcast. So and, yeah. I'm there. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter as well, uh, trying to uh, build my professional <laughs> network there as well. Cool. Uh, so yeah. And I'm also answering all the, the messages on uh, our social media. So if you feel like chatting to me, <laughs> no, I, no excuse, they can get in contact with you. <laughs> well, wherever you try and reach, you will be in contact with yeah. me. So. No, and I def thank you so much. I, I definitely think that the global talent is, is going to be the next step in regards to remote working and people not, you know, companies like yours enable people to, to do it and people don't need to be so afraid of it. Especially I truly hope so. Yeah. so it was lovely to talk to you and, uh, Again, we'll post um, Anya's details in regards to the podcast as well, um, if anybody wants to get in contact with Anya. So take care. Thank you. Bye.